and welcome to webinar 26 already. Yeah, it's it's been a lot, but um, since last week we did cover Frame Canvas. I hope that video was informative. We just went in depth more about um, the frame part of our canvases and the highlights of it, as well as talking about information that might be useful for not only you, but also to relate to your customers. Um, so if you like that video, let us know. Um, this week we are covering a slightly different topic, um, something that you know I was kind of looking forward to talking about, and um, hopefully it provides you with some insight. Um, us here at Luma Prints are always looking for ways to help you with your company and help you with your performance um, in any which way. As a supplier, we provide quality products, but um, it kind of works in two ways. We also want to provide some very useful information. Um, and for this week, we're going to be talking about how drop shipping is going to look like within the year 2024. Um, and by that, I mean, you know, what to expect into the year, what trends are we noticing, and what to watch out for um, in terms of things of ways you can improve, and how if you provide drop shipping items, which if you work with Luma Prints, you know, we are a drop ship supplier. So if you use us, we just want to offer some suggestions here and there. Um, encompassing a couple of factors, which is just the platforms you use, um, how your website is, and also advertisement. Um, so without further ado, we can get right into it. Um, give me one moment. Okay, so um, just getting into it, let's talk about what is dropshipping. Um, so dropshipping is a business model where online stores use a third party vendor or supplier to fulfill orders and hold inventory. We um, here at Luma Prints are considered a dropshipping company. Um, when a customer places the order, the supplier ships their product directly to the customer and you as the online business work kind of as the intermediary processing the transaction and earning the profit. You also work as the communication between you and the customer. So um, for Luma Prints, I would say um, not only are we a dropship company, but we're also a print on demand company. And what that means is that we also create the product and print it as your customer orders it. So whereas other dropshipping companies tend to hold inventory um, or carry a specific item and it's already made and produced and they just ship it out, we create things um, as they are ordered and uh, those products are based on your decision of design. So for canvas prints, paper prints, peel and stick, all of these products that we offer and that use offer to your customer are made for each customer individually. And so the, be the benefits of that is that it creates a lot of customization with your products and it kind of helps you find a way to stand out from the rest because maybe you have a design or you have a product um, mixed with design that no one has seen before. So that's one of the perks of print on demand and also drop shipping. And then um, of course, I think that now that we have a kind of basic understanding of what drop shipping is, um, I kind of want to go more so into the trends that we're going to be seeing going into 2024 regarding drop shipping stores. And, you know, this could be uh, applicable to a lot of other stores, but I know that when it comes to someone who drop ships, you know, your primary focus is also to make sure that your drop shipping store is successful and also that you know, the efforts that you put into the website overall reap as a result of good sales, um, good customer relations. And so I kind of want to talk about some key items to look out for going into the new year, whether you're new and just started, or if you're looking for some additional tips, um, if you already have an established store. For the first point going into 2024, I kind of want to talk about social media and how, um, there has been a rise in certain platforms and what some of the interfaces of those social media platforms look like and how you can use them to your benefit. Um, as of the recent years, uh, if you have been online for a certain amount of time, you probably have seen the effects of TikTok, um, whether it's you being a user on there or enjoying the byproduct of TikTok that is you know, seeing how Instagram has integrated reels or YouTube has integrated shorts. Um, they all are influenced by how TikTok is such a popular and useful website that shows short form video content. 
And it's a really great item to use if you want to leverage for selling your brand or your products. And by that, I kind of want to, you know, focus on how for TikTok, you know, the way that videos work is that, you know, and the algorithm too, is that once a customer or not customer, but a watcher on TikTok sees a video and they interact with it, they stay on it for longer than other videos, it then affects how the rest of their feed is going to look like. So their algorithm is actually really interesting. And a lot of other companies are kind of taking inspiration from that and applying it or applying it to their own algorithms. Um, how it can be useful for you, at least, is that when you have niche communities, um, they're a bit more easy to target within those types of spaces, whether it's TikTok, Instagram Reels, or YouTube Shorts. Um, the idea is that you can advertise to a much more targeted audience because the algorithm is being a little bit better at showing customers or showing viewers what they want to see. And so keywords, key phrases, trends, and the like have been uh, really useful for some companies and people who probably started, you know, with very minimal followers or minimal interactions. And then overnight, uh, you know, the algorithm bodes well for them and they could create a lot of sales as a result. Another aspect of social media is um, the integration of shopping in platforms. And so when you're shopping on, you know, a store, it's because you're usually there with a purpose. Whereas for social media, when you go into social media, you're there for fun, you're there for, you know, looking at people's really cool content. And nowadays, especially with platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and also I would include Facebook, um, they're doing a good job of kind of blending the consumer's shopping experience with their fun on social media. So you can see this with the way, um, there's integrated shopping platforms in social media, the way partners, uh, partnerships happen between influencers and companies or small stores. There are multiple facets of how social media has integrated with shopping. And going into the new year, I guess, which I'll talk more in detail, but um, for the most part, going into the new year, social media should be one of those key items to leverage as a lot of websites that are following the footsteps of TikTok are making it easier for customers or viewers to then become customers. So take that into consideration. Um, and still within that scope of social media, I did wanna talk about trends and I guess the pace at which they're moving now. Um, you know, to some, this might be a very interesting talking point because you know, you're probably thinking, what does this have to do with me, a store owner? Um, when it comes to trends, really, it's one of those facets that um, I think go hand in hand with you developing as a company and how you lend yourself to different niches and communities. Um, as we're seeing, again, as a result of TikTok and short video content and short content in general, trends are cycling faster and there is kind of a new trend almost every other day. And with that, you can kind of take advantage of that because then there's new keywords to optimize to um, that haven't been oversaturated by, say, longer standing trends. And so for you, you could see that when a trend springs up, something like, you know, as of late, uh, what I noticed as kind of my own observation is that maximalism is all the rage on TikTok home decorating. Say you have a style that can lend to that type of home decor, then there's a lot of keywords you can take from that trend and apply it to your shop or apply it to your products. So keep that in mind. And when you see things spring up, um, try to see how it can relate to you because customers or potential customers will be searching for keywords that follow in with those trends. And in general, I think it's always a good practice to keep up with um, online social trends if you wanna keep current with what people are looking to buy. And I kind of wanted to kind of make a distinction between bigger trends and micro trends. Um, for the big trends, it's more about the longevity of how they stay on social media and you know, it could result in a lot of impressions and it could result in a lot of communities 
It can also pave way for a lot of new keywords to spring up, hashtags to utilize, and it's overall a thing to keep an eye out. And they're probably the easiest to keep track of because they are they have a bit more establishment. They go over multiple communities and multiple niches, and they also cross different platforms. As for the micro trends, I feel like they're a bit more fleeting. However, they're still really strong because once the wave comes, um, there is a high surgence of hype, if you will, or FOMO as well, if you want to call it something more geared towards buying. Um, but you could definitely leverage that FOMO or that hype to your products. Again, associating keywords, hashtags, video content. If you create content for your videos, see how you make you yourself um, can lend to these types of trends. Okay. Um, as for customer service, um, of course, we know good customer service is one of those things that, you know, is timeless. There is no um, better way to practice than to have good customer service. But I think going into the new year, there is going to be a lot more stores that have a drop shipping business model and are going to be basically in competition. And as a way for you to stand out, I think adding effort to how your customer is experiencing your store and how you're tending to your customer's needs is going to be what really helps a customer make a purchasing decision between you and someone else who might have similar art or similar products available on their website. Um, this could be a lot of things, but it could include having a descriptive product page, um, having a brand and products that look good um, for your customer. A lot of information on these uh, product pages is very useful because it's kind of par for the course. If you don't have uh, too many details, then you know it could look very um, amateur-like. And what you want to do is be perceived as very well-established. So adding information, adding details is very important. And if you ever want to offer information about your prints from Luma Prints, we do offer a lot of copyright on our pages that you can for sure utilize, whether you want to reword it or, you know, just put it there for customers to see. Um, another facet to include is also very high quality imagery in your um, products. So offering one standalone or silo imagery, offering uh, one that has a interior or a mock-up that has furniture that uh, bodes well with your imagery. There's just a lot of things to take into consideration for customer service. And if you want to stand out, of course, then offering good customer service is going to be what makes you stand out as more and more shops open up. And so for the next trend, I wanted to delve in a bit deeper into is uh, B2B e-commerce. And so for B2B e-commerce, um, this is a very interesting look that at least I made note of, but now that we're having buyers being from a newer generation and buyers adapting to the um, to the new landscape, which is purchasing products online, you're going to see then that buyers might be interested in um, your website or your products. So how are you going to leverage your products and your website to then service them as well? And for those who don't know what B2B is, it's business to business. That is companies or agencies or buyers who tend to buy in bulk, they're gonna be the ones that are going into these e-commerce spaces to purchase. And so for you as a business yourself, how are you gonna lend yourself to other businesses? Again, um, what businesses tend to like to see is bulk order processes as an option flexible payments, flexible delivery options. And it's good to also include copyright on your website here and there just to let them know like, hey, I offer bulk ordering. I offer purchases of multiple items and I'll make it easier for you. And this is how, um, because they're going to be also looking at to see how easy is a checkout process. Can your company uh, scale to their demand? And in which case with your drop shipping with Luma Prints, um, as you, most of you know, we have a really good scaling. Um, that means that we can uh, lend to offering, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of products to you if needed. Um, that's one of the things that stands out about our store is that we do offer 
um, B2B commerce and we offer that service kind of to our customers too, who want to then offer it to businesses they work with. And that could be pointed through bulk ordering and also delivery options. So say your B2B uh, customer wants to get a freight, then we'll help us uh, get that connected with you and have a freight ordered so they could get a truck or what have you to have multiple, if not hundreds of products go to their uh, destination. But just as kind of an idea, but B2B is um, one of those things that going into the new year, it's worth kind of researching and seeing for yourself how you can lend yourself to B2B customers and how you can make yourself not only, you know, it doesn't have to be just B2B, you could also lend yourself to um, consumers who are just purchasing one or two canvases or products. But it's worth noting that there are buyers out there who are looking either on social media or online for products that um, could have your stuff on it. So something to keep in mind, and I think this is an interesting point. Um, and then for the next part, it's um, the concept of quick commerce. Um, since the height of 2020 and the events that transpired from thereafter, uh, a lot of companies offered and gave uh, faster deliveries to people who tend to buy essentials and buy other things and they were having them readily available in a couple of days time and so these delivery times have kind of stuck over the years and even now going to 2024 a lot of customers have that expectation that delivery times will be faster and so one of the ways you can help make your customer shopping experience a bit better is offering um faster delivery times than compared to other places, especially if those said other places might be overseas. As we know, if you ever ordered anything from another um, place, it's gonna take weeks sometimes. And for a lot of customers, they don't have that time or they don't want to um, you know, wait that long. So one of the things you can offer is, you know, weeks to, you know, delivery within a week. And one of the things you can do with Limaprints is that we do offer same day and next day production which is a lot more economically conscious than paying a lot for expedited shipping. Um, as a note for Luma Prince, we do have a three-day production turnaround, and then thereafter it that get it that gets shipped over to your customer, um, which should take no more than a week and a half at most. However, if you want to shorten that time frame, then it's probably a bit more um, money saving to do next day or same day production. Um, only because if you ever had to pay for expedited shipping, you know, it could get really costly, especially with the bigger prints or heavier packaging. Um, one of the ways that we try to um, cater to customers at the height of 2020 and onwards was that we opened a second facility. And that helped a lot because then it made delivery time shorter overall. And so for the most part, we see packages arrive within the week's time. But again, if your customer is maybe looking for faster delivery times, we do have then same day and next day production um, options available for them. Um, and then one of the trends that uh, is also to be note of is influencer marketing. And specifically, uh, I want to hone down on a kind of a new way of um, shopping for customers on the online space, especially in social media. Because as we know, for a couple of years, it's been established that customers have been going on to social media and there's ways for to move from social media to making a purchase, um, whether that's through Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and the like. Um, but what has been in recent developments that I've noticed, whether it's through TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, and even with partnerships with Amazon, is that content creators are now having live streams um, that have products and they're highlighting the products, either subtly or not so subtly, but it allows for the customers who are watching to then be able to buy it right there and then during the live stream. So by tagging the products as kind of demonstrated here in this uh, highlighted in yellow, um, you can kind of see how the integration of products has been more um, noticeable and almost as integrated into the live stream as you can be. Um, 
the, uh, the person in the live stream doesn't even have to be talking about the product, but say someone is watching someone's, you know, um, live stream and they see a really interesting art piece on the wall, um, they might be wondering where I, can I get that? And so there are ways to utilize and leverage this type of online shopping um, to your benefit. And whether it's you doing live painting um, demonstrations and then you have a picture of a previous product that looks similar, or say you're creating a reproduction from scratch and you're doing a live painting there, you can still offer the product right below. And it, these are just some examples, of course, but um, the live shopping feature is new. And I thought it'd be interesting that, um, you know, if you could leverage this to your brand, it would be a really interesting way to kind of observe to see whether or not it works for you because it's still uncharted territory. It's still relatively new, but I think it was interesting to bring up, especially to see how it's gonna bode in 2024. As for advertising trends, we're kind of transitioning more into, I guess, if you are spending money on ads and seeing how that looks like, um, I kind of want to talk about how we've seen trends grow over the years and also see what has been happening since and what to look forward to into the future. Um, here, we're going to get into some um, more marketing focused items, but for Google advertising, um, there are a lot of trends going on with regards to um, how the click through, uh, or sorry, the cost per click is and the conversion rate. Um, one of the things uh, notable about this trend or this kind of graph is that in 2021, it was a lot cheaper to convert customers um, as compared to 2023. And the reasoning for this is that in 2021 and 2020, there was a lot of things that happened. And due to those complications, a lot of companies shut down. And so there was a lot more, um, you know, it was a lot easier for you to advertise and a lot cheaper for you to advertise, less competition overall. Um, but now that you know, companies are going back up and more focusing on advertisements. It's the the price of it has gone up as well as the lowering of conversion rates. Doesn't mean you shouldn't be advertising on Google because of this trend. What it means is that you probably should just focus a bit more on how you can make your keywords stronger, how you can make, um, you know, your advertisements a bit more succinct to your customer base and who you want to reach out to. One of the benefits of Google is that it captures audiences who have a strong intent to purchase. By that, I mean that mostly when people are Googling a certain item, it's because they're willing to buy it or they're looking into window shopping at the very least. Whereas with other platforms such as social media, you're going to have people who are just on social media just because because they're having fun or they're enjoying it for leisure. There's not necessarily an initial intent to purchase. Doesn't mean there isn't but it's just not there initially from the forefront. Another thing to note is that going into the new year, um, a lot of companies who advertise to Google are using the responsive search ads out of all the other ads, such as video ads and the like. Um, they seem to have the best click-through rate overall and people just tend to prefer them. And another thing to note is that any company that does use Google ads tends to use other ads as well. So they don't rely on just Google, but they're putting money into other platforms. Um, and usually mix, uh, it's a, usually a good mix of both social media and also Google. So some things to keep in mind going into the new year, if you're thinking about putting advertising dollars towards your um, store. And here, I just kind of wanted to showcase the different industries that have very varying um, click-through rates, cost per clicks, and conversion rates. Um, these, I kind of showcased all of the industries because I know some customers lend strongly to certain industries. So even though we're all in the market of selling art, um, there are some art pieces that tend to lend to certain industries. So Here's kind of a graph to show you how there's so many varying changes and how each industry is so different from one another. But I also don't want it to discourage you from not continuing to advertise or starting to advertise because one important note is that this is an average and it should not be like the standard. If you have good ads, then you're going to have a bet better click per cost, and you're gonna have a better conversion rate. You're gonna have a better click-through rate. So again, going back all the way back to in the beginning, 
keeping up with trends, keeping up with what your niche and community has. If you have strong keywords that lend to your audiences, then it's going to make for a really strong ad and thus better cost overall towards ad money. All right, so we talked about Google and I also wanted to talk about Facebook. Um, Facebook, as you guys know, is one of the more popular platforms. There's a lot of users there and there's a lot also, what's very notable about Facebook is that there's a lot of um, factors that you can utilize on Facebook's uh, advertisement uh, platform that could help you target specific demographics. Um, so say you want to advertise yourself to local um, consumers or to a certain niche community or people who purchase a certain way, then you can definitely provide advertisements that then targets those categories. And for a lot of marketing um, people, Facebook is tend to be a favored one because there's so much data that we have of customers that it helps you make sure that you can not only find the right customer, but also tailor the right ad for said customer. Um, though it should be noted that with this trend going on here that I have here, um, it was a bit more expensive in the year 2021. And as you can see, the click per cost or the cost per click rather uh, is a bit lower towards the end of 2023, um, averaging about at 85 cents for the year 2023. Um, just note that there was a lot of influxes during 2022, but overall um, right now is kind of a lower rate to start investing money into uh, Facebook advertisements. Just remember always that the value of your um, ads does depend on key said keywords and how successful it is. So keep that in mind. Um, of course, with TikTok, um, if you're not well aware, TikTok has limited information when it comes to their trends from previous years because advertisement for them is relatively new. And by that, it it's not only for companies, but also for content creators who are on the platform who want to work with advertisements and want to sponsor items. But as of late, we did notice that the click-through rate, or not the click-through rate, but the cost per impression, rather, per thousand impressions was around $3.21 with a click-through rate of 0.84%. Um, but um, one of the things I think is notable is that you could probably do a lot better. Um, with the acknowledgement that if you know your audience and if your audience is younger, um, TikTok is probably the best place to be, especially if you know that your customer base is there. Um, and there are multiple ways to advertise on TikTok, which I think could help um, you and creating a more precise type of ad. So there are in-feed ads, Spark ads, and um, I would say video shopping ads. Those three in general are the ones where you're swiping through and you come across a advertisement. Um, and those tend to be the ones that uh, we see more, most generally, most conventionally on the platform. Um, those are very useful because you could have a, basically a mini commercial between people's experiences of videos. And they happen um, every 10 or so TikToks, but they're very useful and something to take into consideration. There's also working with content creators. Say you see a content creator who's in the home decor um, business or who does DIYs or who's big on making really fabulous looking homes, then you can go ahead and create some sort of sponsorship with them or a promotion with them, a collaboration, if you will, and um, have your art you know, featured in one of their videos and then they in turn could advertise it. So there's a lot of methods to which you can utilize TikTok. And while it's a new website and for some people that might be a little bit intimidating, I think with new websites, then there are a lot of uncharted territories then to explore with said platform. Okay. And as kind of a ending note, um, kind of moving away from advertisement, I kind of want to talk about how you can improve yourself going into the new year and kind of what to watch out for. Um, I know that, and I could, um, you know, this is an overview, but I can um, share my screen real quick or stop sharing. Um, I guess for going into the new year, there are some things to keep in mind. Um, suppliers are many. Shopify, if you go in there, they offer uh, supplier apps and 
if you go on to Google and look up people who can supply specific products, there are many, there is no shortage of them. It's a matter of finding one that is reliable and one that could scale to your business. And I guess looking into each supplier, you know, you could do your research and there's some things to look out for, such as customer testimonies, reviews, ordering samples, heavily encouraging and ordering samples because you definitely want to see the product before your customer does. You want to make sure that the execution of said product looks good. You want to make sure the colors look good, um, especially if you're in the business of printing your um, art onto products, um, whether it's wall art or if it's cups or if it's t-shirts, um, you want to make sure that your supplier is reliable. And one of the things that a lot of customers have come to us for is that we scale and we could adapt to your business's demand. And for some of them, they come from places where the suppliers probably can't meet the demands of their, um, you know, of their orders. Say a company starts small and they start growing and growing and growing. At a certain point, sometimes some suppliers can't catch up. So you want to make sure your um, you know, supplier can adapt to your demands, whether they go up or down. So keep that in mind going into the year, especially if you're looking into having new suppliers. As for your e-commerce store, I think that one of the things to note about is that having a store is one thing, but constantly optimizing it, constantly improving it should be a another thing that is very important for your website. And by that, I mean, as previously stated, changing keywords to lend to a more current trend or optimizing the checkout experience for your customers. Say there's new payment methods, keep an eye out for those. As I noted about B2B customers, you want to make sure that you can include new copyright or offer forms for them to be able to utilize um, you know, bulk ordering systems. There's a lot of things you can always improve on. There is no such thing as a perfect website. However, there is a, such a thing as a website that is you know, able to tend to your customers and is always improving. Um, and that could be done with, you know, copyright, that could be done with utilizing new apps, um, that could be utilized with improving imagery or changing up the homepage. It's small factors like this that sets you apart and not only keeps your website fresh, but it keeps it fresh for also your customers who then notice these improvements or customers in the future who will see a really polished website as a result of you constantly changing it up and improving the look and the feel of the website. And then again, customer support, a very important thing to kind of watch out for. You do not want to slip up on customer support, especially when it's now a big deciding factor on how people decide to continue returning to your website. If they had an okay experience, then they might may or may not come back to your website. But if they remember how well you tended to their needs or what you offered, such as free shipping, then there's a likelihood that they have, they'll return. And so customer retention plays in part with customer support. They kind of go hand in hand. If you don't have good customer support, you're not gonna have good customer retention, so on and so forth. Um, it's also notable that they love transparency. I think one of the biggest things is you wanna show transparency with your customers. And what that looks like is showing the production um, or explaining the production process or showcasing where your products are from, um, also showing customer reviews, encouraging customer reviews, and all of this helps build a very strong website overall, and it builds a good rapport with your customers. And this should also apply to social media. Say you open up your social media as a, you know, as a store business account, then you want to make sure that when customers ask questions or send DMs, you're very responsive. And it's kind of your secondary customer support area because people might comment, you want to reply back. You want to say, thank you for the nice words. We appreciate it and so on and so forth. So these are, again, things to watch out for, things that you can always improve going into the new year. Um, but I think that's about it. Of course, if you guys have any questions about what I talked about here today, um, let me know. Um, for next week, we will be going into more depth about marketing and advertisement, if that is of interest to you, or you think that um, what we said today uh, could, you know, go more into detail, we'll do just that. And then next week, it's more so less about social media or Google platforms, 
but we're going to be talking about marketplaces. So where you shop or where you produce, where you have your products listed. So we'll be talking about Wayfair, Etsy, Amazon, Walmart, other platforms, and what that looks like for you as someone who might be utilizing those marketplaces or maybe interested in using those marketplaces. Are these good choices or what are some things to look out for? If that is of interest to you, that will be next week's um, discussion. Um, I appreciate you guys coming in today. Uh, if there is no questions, then feel free to head out. Um, I know that some people have been asking if they want to, if they could watch previous um, webinars. We do have on our page uh, previous webinars. We also have a YouTube channel that you could subscribe to. Um, again, all greatly appreciated. And thank you for taking the time to view us. We'll be on YouTube um, shortly after with this video posted. So if you ever want to rewatch something or you're looking to see any more new info, um, the webinars will always be posted on YouTube. So thank you, guys. Um, I'll stay on the call for a little bit longer. I'll just stop the webinar, though. But feel free to ask questions in the chat if needed. All right. Thank you. Oh, we did get a question from Mona. Or Mona. Uh, do you do personal branding on dropship items? Yes. Um, so as of now, we do offer um, branding where you can upload your logo onto the back of the canvas. Um, and that way, when your customer receives it, there will be a um, square logo at the bottom of the canvas area that will have, you know, whatever up, uh, logo you upload onto your store. Um, to find that, you just need to log into your back end and there should be an option there under your store settings. Um, as for the packaging itself, if you have a name in the store or in your store settings, then that will be the one that will be shown as the return to address name, not the address itself, but the name. So it, say your, you know, name is, um, you know, for example, Mona, then it will show Mona's arts and then our address for returning items. But it gives an, a personal touch to the customer's experience when they see a box and it's from you. So those are just one of the ways that we provide some branding. And of course, you're always open to upload a, um, a a print file that can have any marketing um, copyright that you need, whether it's a discount code or your brand's uh, logo and a thank you note. It could even be as personable as having the customer's name. It's just a matter of you uploading that file and editing it the way that you want. Um, another question was, do you have app integration with Shopify? We do have integration with Shopify. The app as of now, the Luma Prince app on Shopify, is good, but I think it's a bit better just to integrate directly. You're just going to have a bit more options available to you, and it's a bit more um, stronger as a uh, thing to use. So as long as you have it integrated directly from our website to Shopify, it's pretty good and pretty standard, I would say. All right, but thank you for the questions, Mona. Greatly appreciated. And if there are no other questions, I'll be ending the chat here. Oh, one more. Yeah, so to explain a bit further, we do offer direct integration. Um, so if you go onto our website and go in and log in, there are ways for you to integrate through for um, Shopify, for Etsy, and I believe as of recent, WooCommerce. Um, so that just means you're plugging in your um, Web, your Shopify's information onto Luma Prince. And then from there, mapping integration could all happen and transpire on our website directly, um, as opposed to adding an app on Shopify. That's the main difference between the two. And for me, I do suggest the direct integration um, where you go onto our website and connect um, your store to us. And of course, if you're ever looking for more information about this, we do offer um, a couple pages on our website that talk all about integration that could probably explain it a bit more eloquently than I can um, with also offering um, the details that you would need um, for that. But thank you for the question. I know that some people are always looking for how they can connect with us. So thank you for the question. Awesome. Great to hear, Tony. All right. And if there are no other questions, thank you guys for coming in. Um, hopefully this webinar was helpful. Um, and I'll guys, and I'll see you next week.